All right, uh, another one thing I wanted to talk about was the high performance of GridDB. Um, GridDB has a memory first, disk second storage architecture. Um, but basically, that's what it sounds like. Um, when you're first storing your data and whatever the database deems as quote unquote hot data, all of that's stored in memory. And once the database kind of understands that data is getting older or stale, it'll flush all of that data down to the disk. So you won't lose your memory, but the data that you're currently working with likes to stay in memory on your RAM, um, which is much, much, much faster than um, using hard drive or, or even an SSD or even an NV, NVMe drive. Um, so here's kind of the tier of data speeds, right? Or accessing stuff from memory. This is kind of the tier. So first on top, you have the CPU. So the CPU has some cache. Any data that's stored right there, right next to where everything's processed, it's basically instant. It's the fastest you can get because it's proximity to the, the brains of the computer, basically. Um, and then next up would be in cache. Um, and then after that would be memory. So that's your RAM. And then last would be your disk space, SSDs these days, but you know, used to be hard drives and other stuff. Um, so the top of the, the chart is the fastest and you can see memory is clearly above disk. Um, so GridDB being able to pull storage directly from your RAM, your memory, uh, makes it much, much faster than a normal relational database. Um, and to kind of talk about that more, you can kind of see here in this chart. So if you have multiple nodes, um, let's say you have like four nodes in your GridDB cluster, um, you basically have a bunch of memory to work with. You can have even just four over the, you can buy four computers from your local hardware store. And if you load it up with 32 gigabytes in memory each, you have a ton of space to be working with with very fast access data. And um, you can see here that when the data is done, let's say you actually fill up all of that memory. Um, yeah, it'll get saved down to your SSD or disk. All right, and to kind of prove that, um, so obviously me saying, you know, it's in memory, says it's fast. Um, you could probably theoretically think, yeah, that makes sense, but um, there's actually hard numbers to prove this. Um, so GridDB has some white papers up that show they conducted um, a YCSB performance um, benchmark versus Cassandra. Um, so Cassandra is one of the more popular NoSQL databases around. Um, and YCSB is a benchmarking tool. Um, it stands for Yahoo Cloud Servicing Benchmark. Um, so in that study that was conducted by the GridDB team, um, they found that GridDB outperforms Cassandra um, on workload C, which is a read-only workload, by up to 25 times. And um, GridDB also outperformed Cassandra on workload A, which is an update-heavy workload, by sevenfold. Um, so yeah, basically YCSB has a bunch of different tests. Um, the <clears throat> chart here tries to explain what they are. So for example, A is a mostly update-heavy test, B is mostly read, C is read-only, etc. cetera. Um, so you can see across the board, GridDB performs much better than you know, another leading database out there. Um, a lot of it's due to it being in memory, but um, yeah, obviously faster is better. So this showcases that. And then here is another hard number showcase of GridDB being faster than another database. So here now there's another YCSB performance benchmark, this time against another time series database called InfluxDB. Um, so you can see that GridDB outperformed InfluxDB at the read throughput by eightfold. Um, and you can kind of see in the chart here um, exactly what that looks like. So eightfold sounds like a lot, but if, I think if you look at the chart, it looks even more extreme. Um, so yeah, this is kind of just to showcase how well GridDB stacks up versus other NoSQL databases. And um, there's a link down in the bottom of the slide that you can check out yourself. And um, you can see more in-depth tables and charts and configurations and all the, the good stuff. All right, that does it for this lecture.